Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Good Guys Talk Back, episode 195. Uh, I am Nick Morawski, and this is a fan-centric Chicago White Sox podcast. You can find this podcast absolutely everywhere. Uh, We're also available on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel. Uh, Just search Good Guys Talk Back. Uh, Got a lot to get to here. Uh, The GM meetings just wrapped up, uh, trying to dissect some of the things that uh, Rick Hahn said. Uh, There was this rumor trade not too long ago involving the Oakland Athletics, uh, Sox kicking the tires on catcher Sean Murphy. What would that look like? Who would we have to give up? Uh, And most likely we're saying goodbye to Jose Abreu, so we we might have to give another goodbye to him. Um, You can find this podcast on uh, social media. We are on Twitter, at GoodGuysTV. We've got a Facebook fan page. I really appreciate uh, you joining us once again here in the offseason. To break all of this down, let me bring in my co-host, uh, Pat Hester, hello, sir. Nick, good evening to you. And and I'm going to start out the show in a weird way. I'm going to. Uh, I actually have some breaking news that just came across the Shanahan newsroom uh, desk here, and I'm going to read it for you. If mm. you are uh, squeamish in any way, or have a small children that are are you know upset by by horrible horrible news, uh, this would be the time to turn it off or and, mm. you know cover their ears. Uh, this again, shocking news across my desk just now. Uh, and I want your reaction to this. Uh, the uh, Chicago White Sox not to spend money in the off season. And I, I am blown away by yeah. this, Nick, as a yep. lifelong Chicago White you're Sox. Sitting down. Oh, I, and, and now you can bring your children back to the, the, uh, the listening device that you're using, whether it's your iPad or your phone or your radio. Uh, I have just broken the news. Uh, Chicago White Sox not spending money in 2023. Uh, Nick Murawski, your thoughts? Yeah, Uh, a tradition like no other. Uh, Every (laughs) time this year, uh, we talk about a lot of things. You know, this is uh, the season of hope, you know, and wishful thinking. And we've got the holidays around the corner. And uh, this is also the time where you also slip down to some delusional paths of, oh, yeah, the Sox will be in on this guy. And they should be have a seat at a table over here. And why not throw money at that? And it does seem logical but this is a jerry reinsdorf team Uh, this is the chicago white Sox, and uh unfortunately it it, it hurts it hurts to hear what i heard uh, hans say in las vegas during the gm meetings but nothing surprises me pat and and i've become callous as you have and so many other Sox fans and it's you you just you get so angry and you question, but at the end of the day, it's, this is again, Jerry's world. We are just living in it. Yeah, I know. And, and I know you have a direction cause you, you run the show here. So I didn't mean to, uh, to, you got you me know, all hot and bothered put us right? down a, a path yeah. of this stuff no. of talking about this, but it's, it's bothered me. And, and I just can't understand that, you know, we're going to be sitting here uh, for several, several weeks, Nick, and, and you're going to touch on uh, some trade information that you you know has been rumored, and we're going to touch on that. Uh, but that's what it's going to be. That's all it's going to be this off season. Oh, the Sox are rumored to have talked to uh, this team about this piece. That really doesn't change the direction or the you know the way this team is going to go. It's just going to be well. Let's shuffle the the uh, the chairs on the deck here. Let's move this around. Maybe move this piece out. It's all about moving pieces in this piece and bringing that piece in. But you know, we're really again going to be bullish on mm-hmm. the talent that we have here. Which you know, for the most part, is good talent, but uh, you're not ever going to really add to it to make it, you know, to again, like we've said before, push all your chips into the middle of the table. Like we're in go for it mode right right now, and it just never feels like we're in that mode. It's kind of like, well, if everything pans out and we get lightning in a bottle, and this guy comes up from nowhere, and these guys all return to form, and if 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 if, but 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 but. Uh, we should we should win this division still. We're still probably yeah. the most talented team in the division as it is today. Yeah, I, I that return to form business, I get it. And uh, you know, based on you know, maybe a lockout free uh, off season and and the Sox reevaluating once again their strength and conditioning situation and uh, you know, a no a new coaching staff, a fresh perspective, maybe some of these guys. 
uh, return to form. But the fact that they, and by they, I mean, you know, Sachs front office rely on that as that is the path. That is how we are going to be successful. It's just hoping guys can return to form. Yes, they should. I get it. Some of these guys should, but I wouldn't rely on that. You know, mm-hmm. we, we've seen that not happen, you know, over the years. That that, that should not be the fail safe. So uh, the GM meetings occurred. We learned some information during the GM meeting, some actual player information. Sachs, of course, picked up Tim Anderson's option. We knew that was going to happen. That was a no-brainer. Sachs declined the option on Josh Harrison. I, that We kind of assumed that. We, we chopped that up in the last episode, you and I, and it seemed like, you know, move on from Josh Harrison. You can do better. Um, the shocker though, Pat really was the AJ Pollock situation, you know, yeah. declining that your thoughts, your immediate thoughts when you, when you heard about that. I think when, when that happened, it's like, wow. Uh, not that again, not that I'm, you know, broken up that we're not going to have AJ Pollock back, right. That, that, oh my God, this was the guy that we had to have. It's the fact that he didn't pick up the option and take the money. And it's like, I'll, I'll take my chances somewhere else. And then, you know, like I did, and a lot of fans said, it's like, what does that say about this organization? And it goes back to, and I don't think we talked about it on the, uh, on the last episode, Nick, it goes back to the way this team does business. Right. And one of the, uh, um, one of the candidates that came through and talks in, in terms of manager was Espada, right? Mm-hmm. And that was the one everybody was hot on. And Espada obviously not hired, and he stays in in Houston, right? I don't think there's any other place that he's going, as far as I know. No, uh, you know, and the, the the thought was, or what we had heard was, while well, he didn't interview really well, you know, what what I've heard on the other end of that was that he thought the White Sox operated like it was 2010. So, you know, on one hand, you have the one side of the table saying he didn't interview very well. And he says on the other side of it, well, these guys don't do business like an organization should be doing business in 2022. And and that trickles down to your players, right? When you have a, a person that's a free agent that's been around the block a little bit and going, you know what, I'll take my chances somewhere else. I don't need to put up with what the BS that goes on around here. Yeah, I man, I that that's where kind of my mind went a little bit, and and I hear you on the on the uh, Spada thing. I man, I'm I fail to believe he did not interview well. I feel like this guy's been yeah re- been ready, uh, chomping you know to get a managerial gig, and he's been with the Astros. Okay, mm-hmm. that have been a successful organization. Say what you will about him, but they've been a successful organization. Uh, I lean more towards, you know, what you had just mentioned, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's what came out of it. Like, boy, and, and Han mentioned it, you know, in some of his statements that James Fegan wrote about in The Athletic, Han brought up the, the whole analytical thing and said, we've kind of been maybe 20 years behind on some of this stuff. Yeah, if you've been watching the White Sox for a long period of time, you get it. It feels yeah. like the Sox are playing catch up to a lot of other organizations. You know, they are reactive instead of proactive. So I wouldn't be surprised if Espada uh, felt that way. Now, the Pollock thing, you know, hey, there, there could be a thin outfield market. And he looks at it and says, I was traded to the Chicago White Sox. I didn't really want to go to the Chicago White Sox. Now I have my pick of where I would like to go. I might, I, maybe I want to go to an organization that kind of knows what they're doing in the outfield and knows where to play me. And I can play consistently in the position mm-hmm. I want to play in, which is center field. That's really yeah. been his bread and butter. Um, I can make up that eight million, whatever it was, because there was like a, a buyout or something of five million, and then he had the thirteen million option. So I can make up that eight. Yeah. You know, I bet you I can get a deal somewhere. I'm going to roll the dice, and you know, it helped us out of a jam. But I get to what you're saying. You know, immediately yeah. I'm like, what does that say? But then there are other players like Johnny Cueto. Love to come back to the White Sox. Elvis Andrews, I, I would love to come back. You know, I'll even switch positions to come back. You know, in a recent article uh, highlighting, you know, Yasmani Grandal's rehab and everything, Grandal said he would like to stay with the White Sox beyond this current contract, which, I mean, we can, you know, mm. <laughs> I know you, you have reactions about that. But, uh, hey, I, I think, again, I've said it before. 
with this Pedro Grafol hire and everything that came out in that press conference, it just felt to me like, wow, the Sox took so many steps backwards recently during the La Russa era. You know, it's mm. now almost damage control. It's now we've got to rebuild the foundation. We have to be rebuild trust. We've got to like relearn how to play the game. And, yeah. and, and explain analytics to our players and, and teach it to them and, and get them to be fluent with it. And all of these things that maybe other teams are doing, we haven't. And, and it hit them. You know, it hit them in the forehead, the front office. Like, wow, we're, we're behind and now we've got to catch up. Well, it, it, there's there's a lot of things that they're behind on and need to catch up on. And and it's just, you know, it, it's this organization. Jerry Reinsdorf has always talked about organizations win championships, right? That's that's what has gotten him in trouble, you know, it, with players in the past. It's like, well, especially on the basketball side of the business, you know, and talk about all the organizations win championship, not players, because it takes everybody. And you take a step back and you go, OK, that makes a lot of sense. Well, if that's the case, if organizations win championships, then pull your freaking weight a little bit. Do do you are part of this then, sir. You have to be a part of it, an active member in this. And you can't just say, well, this is this should be good enough. No, you need to look yourself in the mirror and say, this is not good enough. What I have done in terms of an owner is unacceptable. And the fact that this gentleman, you know, coaxed his buddy out of retirement. And put him out there and said, I, I, I'm going to, you know, you come here, you've got a ready-made thing. Let's win a World Series together. Let's right a wrong. And he didn't do anything to support him and give him what he needed. You know, you and I, and I think maybe more so me than you, I was, I think maybe I was trying to convince myself along with you that, hey, this, this hire will mean that Jerry is going to be a different owner. He's going to be more aggressive. He's not going to let his manager fail. And what we found is, you know, the, the team didn't help out, right? The team, correct, you know, vastly underperformed. But he didn't do what I thought he would do, and he didn't support his manager and give him absolutely everything that he needed to win. Now, maybe Tony said, well, we've got, an, we've got enough here, Tony, Jared. Don't, don't be spending your money foolishly. But when there were holes to be filled at second base and in right field and maybe getting another arm to set yourself up to really be the odds on favorite, not just in the American League Central, but in the entire American League, Jerry did nothing. Leave no doubt is what you're saying. And, mm -hmm. and there was so much doubt heading into 2021. When I sat at that round table with other AL Central uh, you know, hosts from, you know, lockdown Royals, lockdown guardians. We've had this conversation before and uh, they looked at me and they said, you know what? I don't see anybody uh, that, that's going to be able to match up against the white Sox. And, and I wanted to agree because, you know, the Homer that I am, it's like, I'm going to stand up for the Sox. But I also said, look, they did not address several things this off season. And I think I speak for a lot of fans that are questioning you know, the lack of depth, you mm -hmm. know, at certain positions and what this is going to look like uh, down the line. And, you know, of course, there were a lot of injuries. Guys didn't uh, live up to the back of their baseball card, as, as folks will say, uh, but not addressing second base once again, uh, right field, uh, you know, it has now left us again in this situation. So the, the general manager meetings wrap up in Las Vegas, uh, along with those player options stuff. You hear Han starting to, hey, th this is the whole, like, we're going to be bullish on Andrew Vaughn and Gavin. You listen now. You listen because he's telling you what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. we don't want to listen because we want it a different way because it should be a different way. But this is how it's going to go. And money is apparently not going to be spent. It's going to be maybe around the same payroll uh, as 2022. And the way the Sox are going to get better this offseason is going to have to be creative uh, and, and work the trade, work the trade market. And that, there are a lot of holes to fill. Sox don't have a, a ton of depth in, in the world of prospects to be able to entertain. So you're looking at some big league talent for big league talent. Um, that troubles me. That troubles me. And, and I get it. The Sox had a top seven payroll, maybe top, definitely top 10 after 
uh, the trade deadline this past season. Okay, they they spent just under two hundred million after it was all said and done. Okay, but what do you get with that money? You know, you, you nickeled and dimed it. Yeah. You know, on on a ton of money on bullpen. Yeah. You know, and, and on, on that yeah. good bullpen, right? You you yeah. do it on 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 things. It's like oh, what? like the the Joe Kellys of the world, and even the Gravemans to to the to three an years, twenty four million. I, I wasn't overly impressed with what I saw from a Graveman. You couldn't use them as much as you probably would like to. And use. And that was their loan. That was yeah. their loan move. Aside from uh, re upping Lurie Garcia for three years, that was the Graveman was their one move before the lockout. Yeah. Okay. And I just, I get it when people say, but Jerry threw, you know, look at their payroll. Look at what the Guardian, the Guardians had a $68 million payroll. And what, what did they get out of that team? It's how you spend the money. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's what kind of coaching staff managers, the philosophy that you have to get the most out of your players. Now, here we are, uh, you know, almost, Gosh, six years we're, we're approaching on the Chris Sale trade, and we're still talking about where is that capstone piece? Where is that hundred million dollar plus contract? That that superstar that we're going to be able to have in place for multiple years that we could kind of build around that will take us, you know, to an ALCS and beyond. The fact that we're now talking about scaling back and, and not spending money. In 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 and it should be a very competitive window still. Trump really troubles me, Pat. Yeah, and it's like a a, a shrewd business like organization would say, okay, you know what we could do? Let's get creative. Our our, our minor league system isn't you know anywhere where you know you'd say is respectable in terms of you know the rest of the league. There might be a couple of guys down there that in a couple of years we could see playing you know with the Colas of the world or guys that can Montgomery, you know, sure, you know the Romigan, all those kinds of guys that that we could see in this organization. And maybe we want to hold on to those guys because you don't want to just trade them away because then your your system is really you know not very talented. So okay what's the market full of this year right now, you know, in terms of guys that are, that are impact guys, the position is shortstop. Oh, mm-hmm. Pat, we have a shortstop. Well, you know, what if, what if, now this is what you would do, what you would do if you're a good organization. If we moved off of Tim Anderson, got a lot of pieces back that are, that can help your major league club. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a right fielder. Maybe it's a second baseman, whatever it might be, maybe a starting pitcher or, or, or some guys that can help you also in, in the minor leagues. And then you went out and got one of those marquee shortstops that you pay a lot of money for, right? That's what a good organization would do. It's like, okay, we can't do this, but I've got a piece here and it's a very attractive trade piece because Tim Anderson is breaking the bank here in terms of, you know, annual, uh, annual salary. And he's an all-star. He's a hit machine. He's got a lot of tools that people would love to have on their or in their organization. Why don't we trade while the values at its highest? We're going to reinvest and spend a lot of money to get someone that's a superstar at shortstop. And I can get a lot back for a Tim Anderson. That's what a good organization I think would do Nick, but this organization will not. Well, that's a very forward thinking. And uh, I think it, it, you know, causes me to cringe a little bit because again, I still think we're in this competitive window, but not if we're going to just mess around with trades and not actually spend money to address uh, problems. It's got to be for, both. Nick. Tim it Anderson, really does. Tim Anderson is looking at what these shortstops are making. Okay. And, you know, that's going to set, that is going to set a standard in a couple of years when he goes to market. I highly doubt after hearing what the Sox are talking about right now, that they're all of a sudden going to spend the money to make Tim Anderson the franchise. Uh, you know, they're no. just not, they are not no. going to pay for, to retain Tim Anderson. In my mind, when you've got Carlson Montgomery, you know, that, that could be ready in a, in a couple of years. Now, the, the, the big, the, the trade, I wouldn't say big, but the only real trade that I've, t- I've heard, uh, the rumor was on Friday. Uh, I think it went through Bruce Levine on the score 670 and uh, the Sox t- kicking tires on uh, Sean Murphy. 
a gold glove catcher from Oakland Athletics. Catcher, you say? A catcher? The Sox need a second baseman. Uh, they need to figure out starting pitching. We've got outfield issues now. They're going to be looking at catcher. Why would they uh, be doing that? You know, there's, there's a lot of things to examine uh, there. Sean Murphy would have control uh, for a few years, maybe through 2025. Young, he's got a bat, uh, solid defensively. We're coming off a very questionable Yasmani Grandal year, you know, mm -hmm. and I and I like the things he has said recently. He's staying in Chicago this offseason. He's working out with somebody from the Blackhawks organization. You know, he had troubles again with his legs. That's why he didn't have the power. I, yeah, I want to believe that he can get back to it, but I also know how old he is and how many mm -hmm. operations he's had on his legs as a catcher. And it just doesn't add up. So Sox looking at Sean Murphy, when you heard about this uh, potential, you know, uh, trade and the Sox aren't the only team in involved in this. And I don't even, you know, we'll talk what the realistic uh, chances are, but what were your initial thoughts? Like Sox going after Sean Murphy, a catcher. It seems a little curious because then I start thinking, well, what are you again? What are you going to do with Yasmani Grandal? You've got him signed for another year. He's under con your control for another year, right? I think his contract yep. goes through oh, the yeah, end through of this 2023. Year. Yep. So does that mean you're ultimately looking on flipping Yasmani Grandal? You're going to sell Yasmani Grandal when his value is probably at its lowest? I, 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 it's, it's interesting. Well, for, here's what here's what one of your options would be is if, well, let, let's talk who the centerpiece of the potential trade is Andrew Vaughn. Okay. That's what Oakland wants. Now, if Andrew Vaughn is gone, then you look to platoon at first base with Gavin Sheets and Yasmani Grandal potentially. <sighs> okay. Well, again, nobody is untradeable. Andrew Vaughn, you know, had a season that, that didn't blow me away that not many people did, you know, he did some nice things. He he's, he's been a, uh, this year he was a nice player. Um, by no means was he a superstar by no means is he, you know, gonna, you know, be the next Paul Canerico. If you just look at last year, right. You're not thinking, I, I don't It, it almost it. sounded like you were like Andrew Vaughn's like grandfather. And you're like, well, that was nice. Andrew, you had it a was, really nice, it was a nice, a very nice season. This you, year. you had a, you were a nice little boy. You're, you're a good young man. Uh, you helped an old lady across the street. Good for you. Uh, I, I nothing we don't know what we have. With nothing, him. nothing will shock me, Nick. And, yeah. and I don't want to hold on to a, if again, it, it tell me what I'm getting in return. If it's if it's you know this trade and it's and it's good piece and it makes us better, then you trade Andrew Vaughn, right? I'm I'm always a more uh, open to trading guys when their value is high. And if Andrew Vaughn gets you the most return back and it helps you win this year, then you trade Andrew Vaughn because again, you've got a, a lot of the same type of pieces in your lineup. So somebody has to go. If that's the piece that's getting you the most back, uh, okay, I, I, I can live with that. I can. I don't what's know about you, but I can live with it. Well, what's interesting to me is that the Sox, if we're, we're, if they were to believe this, which I'm going to believe this, that they are actually inquiring about Sean Murphy, they know something that maybe we don't fully know. Like they, they know what the, might be the future of Yasmani Grandal. And they might not have a lot of faith in what Yasmani Grandal is going to be able to bring to the table in 2023. Now, you wouldn't go to the Oakland A's, okay, and start talking to the Oakland A's mm -hmm. if what we were to believe back in the spring when the Sox may be engaged in a Frankie Montas conversation and it sounded like Andrew Vaughn was the centerpiece there, okay? So Oakland knows what you have. So why would you even begin conversations with Oakland if you aren't interested in potentially dealing Andrew Vaughn? It's not like Oakland's going to say, yeah, we don't want Vaughn anymore. Yeah, forget I, about it. I, I highly forget doubt about that. it. You know, Vaughn, I don't know what Oakland's doing. You know, I had a, I had the pleasure of talking to the host of uh, Locked on A's, uh, Jason mm -hmm. Burke. Really, really fun conversation. That's going to be uh, dropping Monday morning. Uh, on, on locked on White Sox. And, and he had some great points. He's like, I really, I think they want to move Sean Murphy. 
Okay. I, I, that's where the Oakland A's are going, but Andrew Vaughn is obviously coveted, but would Oakland want to extend him beyond, you know, his next contract? Are they going to really sign Andrew Vaughn, you know, and spend money? I mean, they're, they're, that doesn't seem to be their MO. It, it, ex- exactly. So are they looking more like prospects like Colas, Montgomery? I, I, Folks, I, I tried my hardest to pitch uh, Gavin Sheets. I, I did my absolute best <laughs> to sell him on Gavin Sheets. He laughed just like you are, uh, Pat. Uh, good sport about it, though, but I don't think they want Gavin Sheets. No? Uh, I, Garrett Crochet, you know, is, is an option in there, too. Mm-hmm. It, it just It's interesting to me, like, what the Sox are thinking about doing. You know, like what what are you doing here? Because I really don't think catcher is the is the position you should be focusing uh, on right now. I don't think so either. And again, if you do that, if they're going to be making a move for a position that they theoretically already have covered, that just means that they've got a whole other list of there's got to be a lot of moving parts with it. Right. That you believe other things are going to happen that you can make happen again, because it's a trickle down effect when you do that, when you're not making moves like, okay, that what would not, what you and I would think would be like, okay, they're making this trade to get, you know, X, Y, Z second baseman. Okay. That makes sense. Cause we need a second baseman, right? Or they marry, they're making this move to get X, Y, Z right fielder. That makes a lot of sense. It it's really baffling. That, that tells me that they are really going to be active in trades. So it tells hmm. me that it's not just a one thing you trade this for this. And that's kind of the end of the story. That means you've got to be making other moves with other teams to make this all work and piece together the way you think it's going to piece together, which also would lead me to believe that this is going to be an excruciatingly long process. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, I, again, I, I don't think the Sox have at all the prospects because Oakland no. wants a King's ransom, you know, and yes. why wouldn't they? Because Sean Murphy, he, he's a hell of a catcher. You're, you're getting a lot and you've got, you know, someone that you can control for a few years. You know, again, I, I don't know what Oakland's future is, but if they're trying to do a rebuild, I, I think you're going to really want some young guys. Andrew Vaughn, what is he on the cusp of 25? Gavin Sheets, 26. Uh, you know, th- they're looking at younger guys. So, I don't think the Sox even have uh, the assets to to compete with Oakland, and, and unless Oakland wants big league talent, you know that's a whole different story. So this is just the beginning, I think, of where we're at. You know, where the Sox are instead of going and, and spending money, they're going to try figuring out, and, and that just seems so, um, oh, man, laborious. You know, yeah. to, to be doing this because you have to have the right partner. And and while that's trying to be figured out, you might be missing out on other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got second base that obviously needs to be figured out. You have internal options. The White Sox do, of course. Uh, Lenin Sosa, Romy Gonzalez, um, the legend, Larry Garcia, um, Danny Mendick. Or you could maybe spend money and, you know, you've got Adam Frazier that's out there, a guy that was talked about quite a bit uh, a yeah. season ago. You know, he, he was the hot guy. He was with uh, Pittsburgh and uh, he ended up going to the Padres, went to Seattle and free agency. Lefty, he's got a little bit of pop. He can be your second baseman. Gene Segura, Phillies decided to decline that option. Gene Segura is out there. You know, that he's got some playoff experience. We've seen him on the big stage. He could be an option if you want to spend some money. Colton Wong is no longer an option. Uh, Milwaukee picked up his option, so he's going to be with Milwaukee. There aren't a ton of other second-base options out yeah. there. You know, you want to go down to Cesar Hernandez? He's available. You know, oh, you, can, oh, you can bring oh, him back. Part two? <laughs> <laughs> you know. You can, again, you can – you can sell me on the idea if you want to fill the, that spot next year internally, uh, because you rattle off some young players that I'm okay giving a shot to. But, you know, these are some talented guys. We saw some some flashes from from a Romy Gonzalez and you know Lenin Sosa in terms of what they've done 
uh, up with the club or but mostly down in the minor leagues. We've seen some things. There's there's actual things that I could say, okay, I'm kind of excited about both of those guys. Let's see what happens. We'll get to spring training. That'll be a battle out there and two guys competing for that spot. You can sell me on that idea. You can't sell me on the idea of we're going to figure it out in the outfield anymore. I just can't go through another season of, you know, we're going to, it's, we're going to start this guy this night and, and maybe we're going to, because of matchups, we're going to, when you say we're going to figure it out due, due to matchups, it means you have no freaking right fielder, Nick. Yeah. Uh, That's what it, that means. I, I think it was, uh, maybe it was the Phillies organization uh, this past playoff uh, season. And there was talk of consistent lineups. You know, yeah. and how refreshing that is. And that's maybe where some of the success has been is guys show up and they know where they're playing and, you know, you can just get into some rhythms, you know, get some consistency. And that hasn't been the case, especially this past season. And I know no. there were some injuries, but there was more inconsistency because of the lineup shuffling, what mm -hmm. LaRusa was doing, especially beginning of the year. Like he was just throwing stuff at a wall, hoping like it might stick. And it was fascinating uh, in a bad way. Uh, there has to be some consistency at shortstop and second base. All right. That was been a revolving door. You want to be strong up the middle. I, I don't know if Yasmani Grandal is going to return to form. That's another thing that Han, you know, spewed uh, during these GM meetings is the hope and the wishful thinking that guys will return to form the back of their baseball card, you know, almost like there's no way we can be struck with this bad luck. Once again, you know, th there's no way it can happen to us a second time. We'll get, will Mancata finally return to form. Will Giolito finally figure it out. You know, will will Grandal get healthy and, and be able to get his legs right uh, and, and, and perform. Well, Robert, stay healthy. Yeah. This it's too much of ifs and ands, you know, somebody once said it, uh, I, I can't remember who it was. It was such a great line this past season, uh, I, on Twitter of the Sox trying to, you know, catch lightning in a bottle instead of bringing the thunder. And, yeah. and that's just, boy, does that not just define this organization? Yeah. Uh, trying to, I hope that these guys get back to form. Sure. Too, and, they, of course. And, and they should, but that shouldn't be, the, that should be a, a part of the plan is like, okay, we, we really still do believe in the talent that we have. We believe that these guys will be healthier this year because we're going to change some things up and we're going to be able to ask guys to try. That's the hope, right? But it shouldn't be the only thing. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be like, okay, that's the end of that. And we're going to close the book. <laughs> And uh, see you in, see you in <laughs> spring. We, we solved that problem. <laughs> okay, that was easy, guys. Good uh, meeting. Yeah. All right. Good to yeah. see you. Let's. How uh, will let's you uh, be addressing these different uh, positions? Well, simple. They're gonna, you know, <laughs> they're gonna return to form. Well, oh. okay. Well, this has oh. been easy. Uh, <laughs> Thank we you, could, Ad we could probably catch the early flight. Uh, it, it, so. I, Look, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm hopeful that some money will be spent. Um, yes, I agree with you about the internal options at second. It feels to me, after Han rattled off that list, he was telling us without, you know, really saying it, get ready for one of these options to be your opening day starting second baseman. Mm -hmm. I, I hope... Go Do you ahead. think that he regrets immensely the the phrase that you love to throw back in his face? Not that you're having conversations with Rick Hahn uh, on a nightly basis. He's always but, welcome on the podcast. I'd love oh, to have well, him on. I'm sure. sure he listens all the time and he can't wait to jump on with us. But <laughs> yeah. the money will be spent comment, oh, I, I think. Yeah. And he'll, he could probably answer it and rebut it and say, well, look at our, our payroll the last you know couple of years. The money was spent. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's again, it's not about, but, I, I don't really care that we're this or that number of, or of payroll, but I'm, I'm telling you when there's guys available and, and the money is the only thing. And, and we, you and I talked about it uh, last year, the Robbie Ray situation, mm -hmm. you know, that was money that could have been spent. That was an efficient amount of money for that type of pitcher. What was it? 15, 16 million, yep. whatever it was. Sure. When you could have gone out there and then you could have said, see, the money was spent. And I spent it on, on a top tier left-handed Cy you know, Young, Cy yeah. Young award-winning type of pitcher. And boom, money was spent. We needed to fill a gap. I got it. 
Mm -hmm. And it, I, and that's that's I, I believe yeah. And so it was not only just the money will be spent, but the second half of that quote was the money will be spent on multiple like winning multiple championships. Okay, and the whole ask me after the parade. Yeah, he's had to eat those words, and I think he's very careful. Uh, he's always careful, and it's the Han speak. But I would say lately he's saying things. And I don't think we want to believe him because it's so depressing, but mm -hmm. this is how it's going to go. You know, just get ready for this. Uh, now, if you want a good laugh, and if you haven't read this article, uh, it came out last week, late last week um, in The Athletic. Jim Bo Bowden uh, wrote this article, and it was a clickbait. But, you know, hey, as Sox fans, you, you know me, folks, uh, anything that is dealing with the White Sox, I'm pouring over it just to examine what are people talking about this organization. And it was landing spots for Aaron Judge. Would Aaron Judge be a perfect fit? Absolutely. This is the Harper thing all over again. Need mm -hmm. a right fielder? Great. Power hitter? Great. Awesome. Can hit all, you know, homer-friendly ballpark? Wonderful. Um, in the landing spots, he gave a list, but the top five, okay, and he gave reasons. Sox, <laughs> Sox were number five on this. And – it was just a bunch of baloney and garbage about never counting Reinsdorf out. And I'm like, well, why is he saying that? Because I've counted him out and he's pretty, much been, <laughs> he's pretty much been counted out for a while now. Where, where is he getting at? The reason why you shouldn't count, count uh, Jerry Reinsdorf out, Pat, and, and everybody else is because 26 years ago, he made a big splash and he brought Albert Bell in on one of the richest contracts in all of baseball. How did that work out? Not very well, but sure, the money was spent then. And that's the reasoning why Judge could potentially be a landing spot. Uh, yeah, well, good Lord. I mean, talk <laughs> about trying to dig to, to make a yeah. make a point. Like, yeah. I mean, and, and, the, and that's one thing. 26 years ago, you, mm -hmm. you could have, if you're going to have that kind of stance, you've got to say, well, I will remind you of this that happened five years ago. And I'll remind you of this move that would happen two years ago. And I'll remind you of this thing that happened 10 years ago. And remember when he went out and got this person, they didn't all work out. But Jerry's always going to go out there and try. And he's, I mean, maybe he was thinking of Jerry Jones. Do you think he was like talking about a different owner, a different sport? Like I, that anything's seems possible. Ridiculous. Uh, if you're and then, and then you should, then he should have followed up with, and you never should count them out for a big trade because uh, in the early eighties, boy, they got Carlton Fisk. <laughs> and that was one of Reinsdorf's <laughs> big first moves. Boy, was he a, just, you know, a sneaky one back then. And I bet you he could pull that off again here. Uh, so just oh, watch out. Fudge. I, <laughs> Yeah, I gave you an old fudge. Yeah, it is the holiday season after all. <laughs> it certainly is. Good uh, night. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I now to follow that up with all the judge nonsense is now you've got the continued Michael Conforto stuff where his oh, agent God. is yeah. uh, his agent, Scott Boris, uh, loves to, you know, entertain folks at these types of meetings. And and claimed it was uh, it is Christmas for the Confortos. That's what Scott Boris uh, said, and that there is so much interest in Michael Conforto. And yeah, it, it fits in a lot of spots. Lefty bat, outfield, did not play at all in 2022 because oh. of a shoulder uh, surgery. Uh, and I mean, his his slash line, you know, he's seven years in the league. I, I'm not blown away, uh, but it could fit. I. I you know, this is where we're at right now. Michael it, Conforto could come up to me with a Michael <laughs> Conforto jersey on and punch <laughs> me in the face, and I wouldn't know who Michael Conforto is. I don't want to hear about Michael Conforto anymore <laughs> because we've been hearing about him. What a perfect fit. What, has it been like two, three years running now with this Michael Conforto garbage? Between Michael Conforto and Jack Peterson, uh, you know, I'm about let it done. Be, let it be Christmas, Easter, 4th of July, and Thanksgiving for the Confortos. I don't care. Yeah, Give me somebody that's good and that actually played in the past year and a half. Uh, a guy that uh, all signs point to it. Uh, there's some sad, you know, reports uh, with zero percent of returning to the White Sox. We, you and I, we've kind of 
you know, we've, we've had our goodbyes on this podcast, but not really official. And, and it's never going to be official until, of course, he signs and, and is wearing another team's uniform. But Jose Abreu, it just does not look at all like he will be coming back to the White Sox. And, and it's tough. You go through those stages of grieving. You know, I I'm kind of in acceptance, but I know I'll switch back to anger. You know, when he truly does sign, <laughs> that's your that's your go-to. Well, I of course, know you know, I'll switch back to anger. <laughs> well, it's a foregone conclusion. What stage are you in? Does it matter? I'll be switching back to anger very yeah, soon. Just, just know I'll most likely revisit anger and stay there for a while. Here's Nick's steps: uh, sadness, <laughs> anger, acceptance, back to anger. I gotta go. I gotta always go touch back with anger yeah, before right. I can move Check on. Him again. Uh, hey, just, anger, just checking back in. Just, just, just Nick sure again. I'm gonna hang out here. Yeah, we still hang out in your couch that. still <laughs> uh and the report uh, that really is going to take you to anger is that he cubs are highly interested you know to bring him in what's also aggravating boy is this aggravating is that they are looking to spend money right i don't know if they actually will they've mm-hmm. got it they sure have it yeah and and there are some pieces away to be you know making things really interesting and a brave fits in their situation. I, man, I don't, I can't even begin to think about him in a Cubs uniform. It is going to be tough. Uh, I wish him well. I really yeah. do. I wish a Brayu well, but it's just the Sox have painted themselves into this situation. It, re- it really have. Yeah. I, I mean, I, if he goes to the Cubs, I mean, man, he, we know he hits in that ballpark. He oh, yeah. Hitting there. So you would think, and, and it hasn't worked out for a lot of organizations, the club, the Cubs mainly when they get the guy that, that, you know, kills them all the time. That doesn't always work out swimmingly for them. But, uh, you know, if he's over there and he's got, you know, two buttons button on a, on his jersey and a, and a, you know, batting helmet that's, you know, orange colored from all the pine tar on it. I mean, I, I wish him all the luck in the world and, and, just a, and hope just he has a lipper, you know, just yeah, ready but, to go. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big. And he's got the, what do you, uh, the, who was the, the wrestler that had the, the goatee that was tied up in the, in the bun? Captain who Lou was, Albano. Yeah. There you go. Thank you yeah. very much. I knew you would sure. help me out with that. <laughs> you know, it, not only are you hanging out in Anger's apartment, you know you're wrestling, so that's well. Uh, 80s, amazing. late 80s and 90s. I feel like I'm gonna go toe to toe with a lot of people, oh, and, I and I don't that. advertise that. I don't talk about that too much because I know there are other folks that that's their power alley. But 80s, 90s, I feel like I can hold my own. Yeah. I know you can. Not WCW, but WWF. I bet you. Oh, the original and the best. Sure. Um, but I, I mean, I, th- I think going to the Cubs would make a lot of sense for him. Like I said, he's going to hit well there. He should hit well there. He has in the past. He doesn't have to move his family. He stays right in the, in the city, and uh, and he can finish out his career there in in an organization that maybe is in a different spot in terms of where they're at. I don't know that the the Cubs are going to be able to really contend. Uh, this year in, in the NL Central, but maybe they will in, in 2024. Um, but it'll be interesting how they piecemeal it together because what I'm hearing is that they're not gonna they're not gonna give anybody a seven year contract, but mm. they'll they'll probably be able to spend. I just don't it doesn't sound like they want to do like the seven year deal types that that are yeah. you know most people are asking for. So anyway, getting back to Abreu, if, if it's with the Cubs, it's with the Cubs. It is what it is, and and I wish them nothing but the best, and I hope he goes you know, 0 for 21 and hits for a, a lot of double plays when we play them. Yeah, I, I was, uh, when I was having this conversation um, with the Locked On uh, Oakland A's uh, host, Jason Burke, uh, we were kind of going down memory lane uh, with some bad, uh, well, the history of Oakland White Sox, because there's been mm-hmm. a lot of it. There's been a mm-hmm. lot of history. And speaking of, you know, seeing uh, White Sox players in a different uniform, I said, man, when you guys got Frank Thomas, it, it really, it, it pained me. Uh, I was happy for Frank Thomas that he was able to continue on his quest for 500. And he had some good, he had a good, some good times with, with Oakland. Yeah. Uh, but that first time coming back into uh, Sox Park, I was there for, for Frank Thomas's first, uh, first, first game. He had two home runs, gave him mm-hmm. a standing ovation. Okay, when he came to the plate, he hit a home run, and then I think he got booed severely his second time up, and he crunched a, another home run. So, I mean, we're no stranger to seeing, you know, folks, you know, wear a Sox uniform for a long period of time. 
go somewhere else and, and come back. Uh, it's going to be hurtful, but you know, you and I, I think are, are passionate about the front of the Jersey as I mm-hmm. know a lot of people are and, and players come and go. We just wanted a different ending for a yeah. Bray you, you know, that, that, that's really it. We, we, we wanted, we wanted to be able to send him off with a world series appearance, man, a world series win would have been out just, over the moon, but we wanted the, we wanted to have the success with him and he did everything he possibly could, yeah. you know, yep. it just, there weren't enough pieces around to help him out. Yeah. Yeah. For, for a team that didn't try at all this past year, it, you can't say that about him. That no. You say, well, with exception to Jose Abreu, Jose Abreu hustled, Jose Abreu played as many games as his body would allow him to play. He played through injuries and, you know, you know that he was hurting a lot and, and hopefully he has a you know a better approach and he's healthier and his legs are underneath him and his power numbers can return. Um, but maybe they won't because, you know, we, you never really know how old these guys are, you know, that, that come in from, from, you know, South America and things like that. And you don't really know what their age is sometimes. And he could be a little bit older than, than we know. And maybe his his best years in terms of power have passed him by. Maybe they haven't. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, he'll you know. he'll he's gonna he'll have a chip on his shoulder. He'll he'll be yeah. out to prove, you know what? You guys earmark the money for a different situation, and uh, you'll you'll pay. You, you'll see. I, I know. But you know what? Hit. Does he want to be here? I mean, I, you didn't hear a lot of chatter from him like it was the last time around when it was like, yeah. I'll, I'll take whatever you know, whatever you give me, I, I want well, to be when you here. see your franchise, when you see your organization draft a natural first baseman mm-hmm. high, high, and you kind of see the writing on the wall, right? Yeah. You're like, I kind of get where you're going here. And he has been very vocal about not wanting to be the DH. And mm-hmm. um, so he's, he's not very flexible, but also, I mean, it's crazy to look at his numbers and how, you know, the offensive year that he had, not the power numbers, but what he was able to do in 2022 up for, you know, Silver Slugger, up for like Heart and Hustle Award. Like, I mean, he is the heart of the mm-hmm. Chicago White Sox uh, since 2014. And it's just, it's going to be sad to see him go. Yeah, unfortunate, but that that's the way it is. And I think as a maybe a younger fan, you get really attached to the players. Sure. And it, and it's hard to see guys go. You mentioned Frank Thomas, my favorite player of all time. Mm-hmm. It was hard for me. Uh, I'm I think I've matured a little bit in my fandom, which is you know hard to believe, mm-hmm. but I have matured a little bit to say, okay, th- this is a business, and it's again like you said it perfectly about the front of the jersey, not the back. Yeah. Uh, buddy, I, I hope we can do this again, uh, next week, perhaps, uh, maybe what we're thankful for, uh, as oh. we approach Thanksgiving a week, uh, yeah. with, this, with this team and, and, and the white Sox. maybe what we're thankful for, maybe we'll even drop a little recipe on you on our, on our oh. listeners. Oh, maybe to get, get ready for Thanksgiving and gathering around the table. What are you looking forward to? Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. I love Thanksgiving. The best, uh, second best holiday of the year, in my opinion. It's, uh, you know, the holidays are uh, a, a great time where, where you're going to run into people most likely that you might haven't seen in a while. And if, if your family's like my family, you know, you start talking baseball, you start talking White mm-hmm. Sox, you, you talk about the season that we had, you know, rumors, what's going on this off season and, and what to look forward to a lot of sports conversations. So hopefully this podcast provides uh, uh, some of that. Uh, for your gatherings. Uh, Pat, always a pleasure talking White Sox with you, buddy. Yeah, Nick, let's do it again next week, buddy. Sounds good. Uh, Folks, thank you so very much. You can find this podcast absolutely everywhere uh, you find your podcasts. Uh, Also check us out uh, on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel would really help us out. Uh, We are on Twitter at GoodGuysTV. We've got a Facebook fan page. Uh, For Pat Hester, I am Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.